Ah, Cellulite. It is one of the heaviest consults that I see in my office. And it's something that's very difficult to treat and it's it's very bothersome. 90 to 95% of women naturally have cellulite. It can happen in thin women as much as in women who are a little bit heavier. So it's not related to being overweight. And I think that's important to say. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome your hosts of Skin Interviews, the Expert Series, George Scandalis and Nathan Strong. Hey, what's good, Hello, everyone? Welcome to Skin Interviews, the Expert Series. I am one of your two hosts. My name is George Scandalis. And my name is Nathan Strong. Thank you, everyone in our live audience, for being here today. How's it going? Wow, wow. Packed house today. It is. Totally packed house Head today. Head to the seams. Thank you to everyone watching from home. I'm sure you are watching the episode on skinnerviews.world. And we love you for that. We love for all the support. We are at episode, what is this? Episode nine. Yes. Whoa. We're close to the end. There's only a couple episodes left after today. So we thank you for following along this journey of Skin Interviews, the expert series. We thank you for all the love and support you've shown to our experts. They have been amazing. And we have loved going to them and learning all about the treatments they offer, what they do, and answering your questions and concerns. And you know where to follow them, and we remind you where to follow us. Instagram, at skin.turviews, Facebook, and LinkedIn, Skin Reviews by Nathan and George. And of course, skinreviews.world, where you can catch season one, season two, get to know our doctors personally before you learn what they do professionally, right? Exactly. I'm doing good? Yeah, and now I've got some questions for you. You do? Well, I do. Okay. So today our episode is all about cellulite. Ah, cellulite. I don't know why why everybody's so freaked out about this. Well, it's it's a pretty big deal. It's a well, big industry. It's a huge industry. Yeah. Do you know the stats? I do know the stats. Oh. 2019. Hold years. on, hold on, hold on. You did your homework. I did. I, I did my homework. So you don't even need me. Do you, want, do you want me to go? I want you to answer some questions. Okay, okay, okay. Give so, me the stats, because so I love stats. You in know 2019. Stats. Yeah. This industry was worth 1.3 billion. Huge. Huge. And they're predicting by 2026, yeah. it's going to be close to 3 billion. That's that's amazing. So I want to ask you some questions. That's amazingly stupid, though. It is. I want to ask you some questions, George. Okay. I'm listening. So, cellulite. Yes. Is it only affected in women? Absolutely not. But I will tell you this, though, that we do know that it affects 95% of women. So... I don't know why everybody's freaking out about it because everybody's got cellulite, right? Give me a show of hands in the audience if you're a woman or a man, because it doesn't affect only women, if you've got cellulite. Look at that. You have cellulite? I do on my thighs. And my, really? And my bum and my wife laughs at me when I get into the shower. Are you every serious? Morning. Yes, every morning. Why haven't you shown me this? Because I'm, you know. Okay, I want to see, see it in the green room backstage. <laughs> But listen, well, that, no, it's good. It's yeah. good because you know what? There is that myth out there that it only affects women, and it does not. And you know what? I love the fact that you have it because I know you want to ask me another myth, but I I'm going to go right into it. I'm going to go. Do you want to answer? Okay, go. Is cellulite fat, George? Well, mm, it kind of is, and it kind of isn't. It's caused by pushing up of the fat. We're going to learn all about that today, but I like that you asked the fat question. Keep going. I have one more question. All right. Does cellulite only affect overweight people? Boom, I'm glad you asked that because that's what I want to talk about. It does not, that is one of the biggest myths. In fact, there are some things where we look at BMI and body size and stuff like that that can accelerate the cause of cellulite, but really it has nothing to do with that. And you are the perfect example. So I love the fact that you brought it up because out of the two of us, he's way more fit. In fact, while he's working out, I'm eating. You know, while he's sleeping, I'm partying. And this is just the way we live, but I don't have cellulite. now. Is that a blessing? Well, I don't have his abs either, so it could be a curse. But somebody as fit as you, somebody as healthy as you, with a great BMI, 
you've got cellulite. So it really has nothing to do with body size, about being overweight. We really got to look at it as just something that occurs in a lot of people, especially a lot of women. Remember, 95% of women. Now, there are some things that we can do to make it look better, and that's what we're going to learn about today. And we also are going to learn about whether surgery is an option or non-surgical techniques are a great solution. In fact, what's really interesting about this episode is we're going to understand how Canada and the U.S. differ in approval rates of technologies or medicines or injectable therapies that are approved for us to be able to use to treat different things. Because in the U.S., they've recently approved an injectable therapy to treat cellulite, but it hasn't come to Canada yet. So this is really great that we get to see something like this because we see how things work in our industry. You're such a smarty pants. Well, you know, I've learned from our experts. <laughs> so instead of hearing from me and from Nathan with his cellulite, okay, give him a round of applause for his cellulite. Give yeah, me, like, you that's me. big, you know? That's big. Give me a round of applause for my dad, though. <laughs> Even though I have no kids. I have a dog. I have a dog. Yeah, see, dog they love bone. it. They you love got your dog bone. I got a dog bone. Uh, I love it. That is such a dad joke. You should have gotten a dad bun. <laughs> All right, let's go hear from our experts about cellulite and what we can do. You better take notes. I will be. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the body contouring episode to get your abs. Well, I'm not gonna be talking about cellulite because I don't really know much about this category. I'm gonna pass it off to some of my colleagues. I'd like to change the word to sell you heavy because it is one of the heaviest consults that I see in my office in terms of Patients are just so bothered by cellulite. I'm a, a facial cosmetic surgeon. I don't deal with the cellulite. There is luckily no cellulite in the face. So first of all, cellulite does not hurt you and it's not associated with negative health consequences. Nevertheless, I think it's often cosmetically bothersome to some people. Whether it's your love handles, your butt, your belly, it's giving you that appearance of almost like that Sealy mattress. Right? That like bumpy kind of contour irregularity that people absolutely hate. It's one of those things that, that, that really drives people nuts. And it's something that's very difficult to treat and it's, it's very bothersome. 90 to 95% of women naturally have cellulite at one time or another in their life. And so it is something that I, I wonder, I just don't know how we evolved to not think it's attractive um, but it's totally normal. If you have it, it's totally normal to have it. Men tend to not get it as frequently as women, or at least present with it as, as frequently as women. Um, maybe that's because men aren't wearing thongs on the beach, or at least most men in the East Coast. I guess it depends on where you are. Men can get cellulite, but a lot less frequently than women, and we're not sure why, but only about 5% of men have cellulite. It's mostly women, and it's mostly centered around the buttocks, the hips, the thighs, um, both sort of posterior, um, laterally, and then medially. So basically all around the thigh, but outer thigh being much more common. It can happen in thin women as much as in women who are a little bit heavier. So it's not related to being overweight. And I think that's important to say, because some people think they can lose a bunch of weight and their cellulite will go away, but that's often not the case. A lot of people who present with cellulite, if you see them in fitted clothes, they look spectacular. You would never guess that they have it because they're not big. You don't have to be big. Sometimes it's more prominent when people gain weight, but it's not necessarily weight related. So let's dive a little deeper into what exactly is cellulite. You've got these fibrous connective bands that go from the skin, dive down through the fat and connect all the way down to the muscles. We have between the deep layer of our fascia or muscle, whether that's on our thigh, overlying skin. And in between that, there's a fat layer. And in those areas, some people more than others have this tethering fibrous tissue that holds that skin down. And as fat cells accumulate, they kind of push up against the skin and these long, tough cords pull down and this creates an uneven surface or dimpling. You don't have to have a whole lot of fat. It's the fact that you have some fat with these tethering fibrous cords. The fat herniates upward or looks like it is, but mainly it's because that fibrous cord is pulling downward. Think about a ball pit, you know, a Chuck E. Cheese or something like that. Now, You've got all the balls that are a little bit irregular. Think about those as the fat. Now put a nice thin white bed sheet. That's the skin. Imagine there's these little pieces of string going down from the bed sheet, pulling. Of course, you're gonna see those balls poking out. Same sort of idea with what cellulite is. Sometimes those dimples are just always there. 
um, regardless of what you're doing. And sometimes they're positional. In other words, when you, if you sit a certain way or you exert yourself a certain way, it pulls on those little fibrous tetherings and makes the cellulite look more noticeable. So there are many factors that play a role in why cellulite appears the way it does. And there are many hypotheses about why cellulite occurs in the first place. Most of them point to potentially a major role of hormones, especially estrogen, um, because we do see cellulite more commonly in women than men. Because there's a hormonal trigger that can influence cellulite in pregnancies and even nursing, cellulite can appear more obvious. So we do think there is a hormonal component that plays a role to accentuating cellulite and there's many theories regarding why, um, including not only just hormonal factors, but um, how it influences, let's say, the microcirculation and the lymphatic drainage of that area. Genes and possibly lifestyle, so diet or exercise may play a part in cellulite formation. And then it also worsens with, of course, things like obesity or weight gain. But even though there's been some studies that show a slight association with increased body mass index or BMI, cellulite really can be present in women of all sizes. It has genetic factors, it has hormonal factors, um, and obviously also aging plays a role in it. The fat projection gets worse, for example, with age um, because of the skin laxity. If it bothers you, you do something about it. If you choose to embrace it, that's wonderful too. One of the biggest challenges is treating cellulites, and we still haven't found a perfect way to really treat it, to get rid of it. Uh, we can improve it, but we can't get completely rid of it. A rigotomy and fat transfer until recently has been the only true treatment. That means to actually lift up and cut those bands of connective tissue. Treating cellulite basically involves treating the reasons for the cellulite. Um, you can't necessarily cure cellulite because of, again, all of those factors. We can't completely change some of the hormonal factors, the, um, again, lymphatics, genetics, and so on. I would never, ever promise or guarantee someone complete elimination of cellulite, ever, because I've never been able to achieve it. It's, it's, it's something that you'll have some, we wanna make you better, we wanna give you, you know, some volume reduction perhaps, rid you of some of these areas of cellulite, but I certainly would not set up pretense of saying we're going to eliminate cellulite. Please, again, to my colleagues, if you have a permanent cellulite resolution recipe, please call me and give it to me because I don't have it. The only way to improve cellulite that we know of that does not involve procedures is to lose weight and do toning exercises. But that in itself is not guaranteed to get rid of cellulite in a lot of cases. It can improve it because there's less fat around the tethered areas and so the dimples can look less indented. Again, we're getting into this fat versus shape versus desire and contour mix. I have to start with the basics of nutrition, exercise, toning, and hydration. I start with that with every patient because if I do nothing to them and I could just get them to hone in on that, we're gonna have a, a, a better client, a better result. As a matter of fact, um, uh, stress and catecholamine release, which is due to stress, uh, has found to be uh, one of the causes of cellulites. So, um, you know, we can, uh, from, from, from our point, uh, uh, a patient point, we can um, try to um, limit the amount of cellulites simply by lifestyle changes. But the things that we can change with the physiology, so for example, releasing some of the septae, strengthening the texture, um, or sorry, strengthening the thickness of the skin and the collagen and elastin uh, bundles in the skin that hold it together and hold the fat more tightly in the skin, um, as well treating, of course, fat. So when you remove some of the adipose tissue or the fat in that area, the dimpling becomes less as well. So there are many things that we can do to treat the pathophysiology of cellulite, which is not curing cellulite, but it is treating the reasons for the cellulite. When it comes to treatment, I tell them, look, we have a scenario where we have these pockets, if you will, or, or rooms of fat that are divided by these septal um, tethering cords, if you will. So we're gonna start by, let's try to get rid of some of the fat, that would help. And secondly, is there anything we can do to kind of diminish the tethering or the tightness or the adherence of that skin contributing to the cellulite? The more modalities there are to treat, let's say, a particular um, presentation, 
sometimes that's because there's no perfect modality um, because there's just so many that exist. We haven't found exactly the right one that sort of has risen to the challenge. So I think that's the case with cellulite. There are so many treatment options because each one will target something different about cellulite, again, which is not curing it. It's not altering some of the major factors, um, again, being genetics and hormones and so on. Um, but some of these treatment modalities, I think, have been quite successful. For me, the liposuction using a power-assisted liposuction or a laser-type liposuction, it's addressing those two contributing factors. One, it's decreasing the amount of fat, and two, the mechanical disruption of the actual liposuction modalities themselves are helping to break down some of those fibers, some of those tethering cords. Now, I can tell you it doesn't break them all down. And I can tell you that if you liposuction someone aggressively, a skin panel, a thigh, and you were to look under that skin, you will still see, even all the fat is gone, you will still see perforating blood vessels, you'll still see perforating uh, attachments, so they're there. But it does diminish them. The um, modalities that I've used often are combination modalities. It really depends on the assessment. There are many non-surgical options for improving cellulite. One of my favorite ones has been cool sculpting. Believe it or not, the flat panel with cool sculpting is very effective. It freezes the fat that's closest to the surface of the skin. And so unlike liposuction or other modalities that reduce fat that's deeper, this is actually planing and smoothing the appearance of the skin by reducing the fat that's closest to the surface. So my assessment involves looking not only at their skin, involves looking at how much adipose tissue or fat there is underlying. Um, it involves feeling the skin to feel, if I can, how strong those fiber septae are and how much they're pulling. Um, and then of course, factoring all those things in with regards to the patient age, wh what type of improvement they're looking for, um, how prominent the dimpling is, what size of zone it involves, and so on. There are some treatments that have been out, like Selfina, that can break the bands, and that helps some of the deeper dimples, but not some of the softer ones. Subcision, it's when you pass a needle underneath the bands. Uh, that can potentially have effect as well, but there can be side effects, including swelling, discomfort, pain, and bruising. And the those fibrous adhesions frustratingly often heal back to each other because although we cut across those fibrous adhesions, they're still sitting there. So the body's tendency is for them to just heal right back to each other. In terms of other non-invasive options, there is evidence that certain injectables, including poly lactic acid and calcium hydroxyapatite, they can help stimulate collagen. That's very popular with models and celebrities who have just one or two dimples that are really bothering them. We do hyaluronic acid injections into those and plump them up. There's also several devices that have been FDA cle cleared for the treatment of cellulite. There's a la laser and a needle-based system. I don't currently use them in my practice. There are also non-invasive ways to treat cellulite. It's usually a series of treatments with either radio frequency, suction, and massage. Um, these are procedures such as endermology or VeliShape. Um, and they're very popular, but they make the cellulite look better for the short term. And after a number of months or half a year, the cellulite returns to its original appearance unless maintenance treatments are done. One of the problems is that in people who have cellulite, they also often have skin laxity, which is loose, kind of a little bit more hanging skin. And none of these treatments really address that. So you often have to also combine it with some tightening treatments and skin firming in order to see results. Um, I've also treated patients with severe skin laxity in the area with um, something as aggressive as a fractionated CO2. So I have actually used pretty aggressive methods on the skin where I know, you know what my end game is and what my goals are, um, and I know how to manage the patient from you know, start to finish with regards to that technology, and patients have been happy with a single session of treatment. The question of whether you can get the skin 100% firm, that's kind of doubtful for right now, until we come up with something better. There's a new FDA-approved treatment. It's an injectable collagenase, and we don't actually have it here in Canada yet. You know, sometimes we get things first here, and sometimes you get things first in Canada. And I kind of like it when you get it first in Canada, because then I speak with my Canadian mentors and colleagues, and I learn so much about a product before I start using it. So I kind of wish you'd get more stuff before us. Quo is an injectable collagenase. Collagenase is something that actually works to break down collagen. So we've been using this for a long time in Dupuytren's contraction when patients get a lot of thick buildup of collagen in their fingers, which progressively flexes the finger. 
It's actually been repurposed in the United States to be used as an injection to dissolve those cellulite bands. These fibrous tethers are made of collagen, and so when we inject this into that dimpled area, it loosens that tethering, and after a series of three treatments, permanently releases that dimpling. You might need touch-up treatments, and also you can make new cellulite. I know what's out there. I hear about it, the literature and, and the media and stuff. I personally have no experience with it. Again, though, I look to things, innovations like that, that make sense, right? So we know the problem. If we can find innovations that attack directly the problem, like breaking down those collagen extensions. I think it's a genius idea, but the jury's still out on how effective it'll be. I believe there are very small studies so far in the U.S. I think the patient range would be maybe 15 to 35 patients at most. Um, and so those studies are quite small. Um, I don't recall if they were standardized or blinded or whatnot, um, but I do think it is a promising treatment just based on, you know, how it works. So I do think that's going to be something that is um, very helpful in our repertoire of treatments for cellulite. Hey, if that is a modality that's going to work, I more than welcome it. And I think, you know, we're waiting to see the results. We don't have it yet, um, but it'll be interesting to see as it rolls out in more and more clinics as to the effect that can be achieved. Many patients want to know, is there a cream that can take away my cellulite? And though there was some research looking at caffeine and whether it could help, help in general, I'm pretty skeptical that many creams can actually reduce cellulite in the long run. So there's a few things that really kind of get me and kind of make me want to put a chokehold on someone. One is the lunchtime facelift. That's one. And the second one is this marketing of this anti-cellulite potion or cream or magic fucking wand that you can buy on Amazon or wherever that's supposed to magically cure your cellulite. I mean, come on, come on, no. There's no creams, lotions, potions, or anything like that that can fix this, so please save your money. There's enough places in the world to waste your money. And, and I have patients ask the question, they are looking for it, they're hoping, doctor, I have this cream, my sister has this cream. I I'm like, I just can't endorse it. I can't, it does, I have yet to see. And the, and the, I have gone online and I've seen these different products and I look at the before and the after and I'm like, wow, her cellulite really does look better. But A, I don't even think it's the same woman. And number two, the lighting is so changed that, you know, again, it's a contour irregularity and lighting can do a lot to hide or, you know, highlight areas of, of divots or, or raises. There are no creams that permanently reduce cellulite, but there are some that can reduce the appearance of cellulite. There's one from Brazil that I've heard of called thiomucase that's very effective. We're not exactly sure what active ingredient is in that particular product, but we know that a lot of cellulite creams have caffeine and they help to firm the skin and deplete the fat cells that are closest to the surface of water. So temporarily, they make the cellulite look less noticeable. I think that there are some creams, I think retinol can help firm the skin that can improve the appearance of cellulite. But cellulite is deeper than that. So I think it's really helping more the laxity than actual cellulite itself. There aren't any creams that I've seen. I mean, some of them try to help with lymphatic drainage and, and can maybe temporarily help improve it a little bit. Topical treatments like creams um, and massages, high def massages, usually the improvement in the appearance of the cellulite lasts anywhere from one to three days. It's very popular here, here in LA to get high def uh, deep tissue massage treatments and it helps to reduce the appearance of cellulite helps to make the abs look more toned. And so that's something that people do before they walk the red carpet. I'm actually experimenting with a cellulite garment that can help temporarily improve the appearance of cellulite. And you know what? Temporary is fine with me. If, if you can make it temporarily better and get me through my weekend or my vacation, that's fine, and then I'll do it again if that's necessary. I mean, we do neuromodulators over time, so I don't know that you have to have permanence for some of these things, but, um, but it would be nice. But even temporary would be kind of a nice fix if you could make it good enough. It's important to recognize that none of these things will cure or win the fight. But these are things that we have in our tool chest in the battle against cellulite. I think this industry is moving very quickly with regards to opportunities and people who are just 
you know, absolutely bright innovators in this field who are combining their knowledge with medicine and with technology, and they're coming up with these very ingenious um, and intuitively, uh, you know, impressive ways to achieve results that we did not think were possible. So do I think things are going to change in with regards to treatment of cellulite? I do. Um, I think that it's going to be very different in the next five years. We're going to have um, maybe a different conversation altogether, but I think some of the things will have to stay the same because, again, of all the things we've done so far to see why this happens. But treatment, I think, will evolve and hopefully get better and better. Stretch marks are also really, really common. Yeah, so stretch mark is a type of scar that develops when our skin stretches or shrinks quickly. And that abrupt change can cause the collagen and elastin, which support our skin, to actually rupture and create this stretch mark-like effect. And as the skin heals, you can see that stretch mark. So it's actually loss of ground substance of the skin, which is why it looks stretched. So it looks stretched and then you have skin like this and in between, there's loss of very important elements that give the skin that structure. Our normal skin is like a thick leather. A stretch mark is basically where that, you get a thinning of the leather and it thins out and you have that divot, that thin skin, the atrophy of the skin, which also can uh, also have some capillary changes. So it's red or purple, really kind of disfiguring looking. People don't like them. Not everyone develops these. Fluctuating hormone levels seem to play a role. Um, you may also have a higher risk if people in your family get stretch marks. Um, but they're more common in general with growth spurts that happen in puberty. It's commonly in areas that have been stretched a lot, like a belly after pregnancy or weight loss or weight gain. Weight training, so if you have this rapid muscle growth, or uh, using topical steroids for a long time can also increase your risk. Commonly those stretch marks are cured in my hand because I'm doing a tummy tuck, I'm cutting them out. They're gone with the skin, they're gone. Um, severe stretch marks, however, I have not been able to find a way to regenerate that dermis, to reapproximate that, to get rid of the stretch mark. I really haven't. I've had some success in treating the discoloration of the stretch mark, that red purpley color with various IP, uh, laser treatments, um, but that's about it. In terms of the structure, I haven't found one, and I'm not aware of a good one out there that's reliable and reproducible. There are other procedures that can be helpful. Lasers, microneedling, radio frequency, or ultrasound. We also, on top of that, add in growth factors and topical sculptra, and that seems to help patients a lot, and they're often very happy with the results in that the stretch marks appear smaller and some of the smaller ones completely disappear. So researchers have studied many um, creams, lotions, gels, there's so many things sold that claim to treat stretch marks. Uh, and a little bit of background. I think there's no one product that seems to help all the time. Um, and some, frankly, probably don't help at all, but there are some hacks or things that researchers have described may be of benefit. So if you wanna try one of these creams, lotions, or gels to fade stretch marks, be sure that you're using the product on early stretch marks. So treatment seems to have little effect on more mature or older stretch marks. Massaging the product into your stretch marks um, can also potentially have help. That's thought to maybe have a role. And applying this product every day for weeks. This is not something that's gonna be an overnight fix. It's something that you're gonna need long-term treatment. We have our Fatona laser that's been very helpful for stretch marks, that's a combination of an ND YAG and an Erbium YAG laser. Researchers actually have discovered that many of these remedies that are said to prevent stretch marks don't actually work at all. And in studies, things like almond oil, cocoa butter, olive oil, vitamin E, none of them were actually shown to prevent stretch marks. But there are two ingredients that may have some relief. So this uh, has been shown in a couple of studies. So hyaluronic acid, Applying it early to stretch marks made the stretch marks seem less noticeable, so there may be something there. Um, the bigger one uh, with a bit more research is around tretinoin, which is a retinoid, and that's been shown to be helpful. And people who applied this prescription cream every night uh, for 24 weeks had less noticeable stretch marks, and those who didn't apply the cream saw their early stretch marks grow. Um, other studies you know, around tretinoin have shown similar results. Um, of note though, you shouldn't use topical vitamin A or tretinoin uh, during pregnancy. The problem is it can take quite a few treatments and it can get a little bit costly. So you really have to hate those stretch marks and want to be able to invest in them. I haven't seen a stretch mark treatment that's inexpensive, that works really well. 
So it becomes an investment. And sometimes I don't know if it's really worth it. And I think, you know, talk to your physician about what options may be available to you. I was just reading an article about a product that's available as a treatment for glaucoma that when injected to the edge of a scar can help eliminate it altogether. So it may be that one day with stretch marks, we can just create a wound and inject that, that ingredient, that drug into the edge of the scar and then completely erase it that way. And maybe that'll work for cellulite as well. This isn't something that's available yet, but on the good news side is that this is a drug that's been out for 20 years. So it's already FDA approved for something. And we know from previous episode, I mentioned that if something is FDA approved for anything, we could use it off label. So it's something that we might start trying to see if it actually works in our patients for wounds that we have to create, not, not on purpose, but wounds from either they've had trauma or something else where we have options of what we can do for them, seeing how it heals, and then we can always build. But this is something that's in the works. Hopefully it will be available in the next year or so, and um, and we'll be able to have facelifts without scars. We'll be able to have you know burns that we can heal without scars, and, and it may change the trajectory of, of how our skin heals in, ge- in general. So I'm really excited about it, but it's an idea for now. It's not proven. This is mostly in animal models, in mice specifically, and mice are not always men in how they respond in science. So we'll have to see if it really works. But if it does, we might have a home run. Another episode of Skin Interviews, the expert series has reached its end. This one was an episode with quite a bumpy road to the finish. He's got the he's got the dad jokes. Well, I now. said I got the dad jokes because I got the dad bod. You just got the three kids. Like you know, it's symmetry and balance. <laughs> That's how it works. All right, Nathan, tell them where they can follow us. Skin dot to views on Instagram. Skin to views by Nathan and George on Facebook and LinkedIn. And don't forget our amazing website. We're too big for dot com these days. So yeah, we're skin to views dot world. And a huge thank you to this amazing studio <laughs> audience once again. Every week they're coming in the numbers, and it's not just our friends and family. No, it's more than that. It's more than that. You know, and if you don't believe us, you can ask our camera guy, Matt. You know, he'll he'll tell you. He'll tell you there's a few of a, a few more people extra in the odds. But listen, that being said, two episodes remain. So if you want to be part of our live studio audience, you gotta head over to skinterviews.world, go to the section to be part of our audience, buy tickets. Get there before they're sold out. We look forward to seeing you in person. We look forward to chatting you off camera, chatting with you off camera and getting to know you personally as well. And of course, support our exports, support us so that we can continue to bring you quality information and answer the questions you want the answers to. Right? Thank you and good night. See you on the next episode. Ciao, buddy. See you, buddy.